Hello. Well, I've been given another video recorder. And as we all know, you can never have enough video recorders. This is a beautiful Sony DVW A500P digital beta cam recorder, which can also play analog beta cam tapes. And it comes with a service manual too. So before we uh, play too much with the machine, let's have a quick look at the service manual. So this manual covers the DVW500P and A500. So the A means it supports analog playback. Oh, and looking at this machine, usually the panel here, these labels, they start to fall apart. This one is hardly doing that at all. So cosmetically, this is one of the best condition uh, DigiBeta machines I've ever seen. Box over it says. It might be an original owner of the machine at some point. So the service manual tells us a great deal of what we'd ever need to know about this, but there's a few little things that I particularly wanted to show you that caught my eye when I was browsing this earlier. I mean, it's full of gems, like how to get a cassette out when it's stuck in there. This is something I thought was always very good on Sony equipment. You have an emergency, you have a breakdown, your tape's stuck in there, you've got some crisis and you need to get the tape out. It's easy to work on Sony machines and do things like this, whereas Panasonic professional video recorders tend to be much harder to access. There's a, a part here that explains the digital beta cam format, and it's all very exciting. The digital beta cam format has been developed as a digital version of the analog beta cam format, which is now accepted as a standard in broadcasting production and ENG. Absolutely right. So there were competitors such as the M2 format for beta cam SP, but it died a death because beta cam just got the market sewn up, the machines were reliable uh, and easy to work on and the results were great and the backup was excellent and the service information and parts were great and you can see why Sony had the uh, professional video uh, market sewn up for decades. But to perform such a workhorse VTR, a new bitrate reduction, so they're saying that the data is compressed by effectively uh, about half. So they kind of knew when they built this that this machine was going to be a success. They knew everything that was needed to make this machine a success. And they were. These were sold in very large numbers, which is impressive considering how much they cost. So I'll look that up later. The DVWA500 analog both metal and oxide tapes can be played. Now, I knew these could play the metal tapes, but I wasn't aware of the fact they could play the oxide ones. So beta cam oxide recordings, which were made essentially on Betamax tapes, could also be played on this. Obviously, Betamax recordings couldn't. The head drum's different, the, the scanning um, angles are all different, the tape speed's different. There's no way it could play a Betacam, uh, Betamax uh, recording. It goes into some more detail here about the tape path alignment and how it compares with Betacam SP. Clearly, the head drum had to be the same uh, and the scanning angles have to be the same in order to have Betacam SP playback capability. It's worth noting though that though this machine will play analog tapes uh, both oxide and SP as well as digital Betacam, it doesn't mean it plays everything. The little portable Sony uh, J3 and J30 models could actually play more different types of tape than can this. So they can play some of the Betacam, uh, digital Betacam variants, and they can also do NTSC and PAL, whereas this machine here is PAL only. The manual is uh, really full of all kinds of interesting information. You could just sit here and read this, but there's a couple of little things I wanted to point out. What did I find in here? There's uh, the inner drum assembly, and it shows you the head drum the amount of heads there are, it's huge. And then there's what they call the AT head, which I think is the uh, linear. And this caught my eye. So it's got the LTC for the linear tape counter and Q, and Q arrays and arrays. But look, dummy head. What's a dummy head for? That can't be for in the analog audio position because it does support analog audio from Betacam tapes. So what's the dummy head all about? Be interesting to know that. It's also a full arrays head that does the whole tape width. So it's great having this entire service manual with everything you'd ever want to know about 
cleaning the machine and all the signals you should have it's absolutely brilliant so let's look at the machine now as ever with uh, professional equipment it's very often more interesting to see what's going on around the back than the front so before we power it up and look at the front and connect it up let's uh, have a look at the connectors we have around the back I haven't worked in broadcast I work on a lot of broadcast equipment but because I've not worked in a studio I don't necessarily know what every single connector does but uh, let's work through what I do know so analog you've got uh, composite as an option uh, composite input you can switch the 75 ohm load on or off now I don't know if this one has that option and I can't think why you'd want it really why would you feed a machine like this with composite video probably more commonly used would be YUV inputs or Y R Y and BY what it lacks in inputs is S video which I always thought was a bit of a shame I think if they'd had S video in and out that would have been useful because not every equipment has got component uh, for example you needed to take a, a signal from say a high 8 deck it could be useful to be able to feed it uh, with high 8 with an S video connector so um, bit of a failing that I think video output so without having an option they always have composite video out and super means superimposed so that superimposes the uh, time code uh, and read out information on that signal in fact we might use that one when we connect it to this uh, little monitor so we can see the the menu um, screens pop up on that and again uh, component out and then for analog audio uh, balanced four channel in and out uh, plus Q but I must admit I'm no expert on what the Q signal is uh, then there's time code in and out again I'm no great expert on using the time codes but if you hooked a couple of these machines together you could duplicate a digital beta cam tape and maintain the time coding on your second generation copy and it wouldn't be a generation copy it would be a lossless digital copy provided you use the digital signals here so let's talk about those so this is the SDI signal so there's input and outputs and again you've got one with superimposed uh, readout information so you wouldn't want to get that one anywhere near what the uh, uh, broadcast system would use because you don't ever want that to be seen by the end user uh, and then there's digital output here which is AES-EBU so that's actually essentially the same format as uh, you'd get from a normal CD player um, because ASEBU is very closely related to uh, the normal digital audio connector uh, or indeed uh, an electrical equivalent of the Toslink connector that you see on say a CD player or mini disc or something like that uh, it's usually interchangeable with it uh, so you've got input and output for that now that of course only carries two channels which is why there's two of them uh, there was a kind of a variant of Toslink that can carry eight channels but that was a, a special version so uh, there was obviously an optional control panel and remote controls in and out and uh, RS-232 serial which of course was pretty obsolete even when this thing was built and video control which you've got a cover on it I wonder what that does that will be for I think uh, controlling the uh, analog video performance so you could adjust the um, time-based corrector uh, operation I believe so for example the delay in luma and chroma and this sort of thing uh, we'll see what connect uh, what adjustments there are for that on the front panel in a moment power in big fan and a breaker rather than the fuse so they can be reset if something silly happens and you manage to pop that let's get around the front and we'll also power it up I don't know if this is the original power cable I suspect the original one but it had Sony branded on it but what's rather interesting is it's clear and you can see the wiring which I think is rather wonderful while I'm hooking it up I can connect this um, video signal but there's no balanced sorry there's no unbalanced audio output or monitor output on the rear so I can't easily connect the audio up to this TV not without messing around with different cables okay let's power it up 
This is the first time I've powered it up, so uh, let's hope everything goes well. All looking good, I'd say. I have a little collection of tapes to try on it. Small and large in beta cam and digi beta. This is a large digi beta. One thing I see here is that play button's a bit wonky. Should be centered better than that. Why do I not have an image? Because I've got a cable unplugged. Let's fix that. So here we are playing a bit of a digi beta tape. It's playing beautifully. If it hits standby, it will unlace and sit there waiting for me to give it another command. But it won't respond as quickly as if it was laced. So it's quieter, less wear on the tape and heads. Let's do an analog Betacam SP tape, small size. So we heard the noise of the uh, reels driving in for the smaller tape. This is Betamax size tape. Right, this model does not have dynamic track following. There's a player only version which can come with that option for analog playback. Which means you can give perfect trick results, but this doesn't. We had a head clog for a moment then. Oh. These tapes are past the best, I think. Put this one in. Now I have noticed, I think, that um, digital beta cam players, when they're faced with very noisy analog tapes, don't give quite such a nice output as a real beta cam SP machine does, uh, such as UVW1800P or similar. So here we have four channels of audio, so there's the linear audio channels which are those two and then FM audio uh, and it says emph so it's got pre-emphasis applied to give better performance. There's more controls because you can never have enough controls. These are some of the analog controls I think such as here we go remember I said there was a control at the back for picture I think that's this these can, this here, if I set this to remote, I think, then you could control the picture remotely. I believe that's what it does. This is menu and local, so local will be these controls here, and menu, I think we can go through a menu screen. That was the audio emphasis we were talking about earlier. So if I switch that off, it might switch off the emphasis display. Let's try that. So if I switch this off, yes, they go out. Then more controls under here, not many. So Dolby, this will be for playback only, I believe. Uh, time code controls. Uh, again, I'm no expert on time coding. Characters on and off, uh, we switched to on, so that will now appear on our monitor. Let's have a look at that. Remember we said earlier that uh, the superimpose output will operate with that switched on. Let's go into the menu, shall we? Can we call it? Yes, we can call up the menu now on this monitor. Oh, also we look at the uh, hours on the machine. So the total operating hours are 54,000, but the Drum hours are 4,000, and then there should be a resettable version of that somewhere. Then the drum hours, yes, so it's still in the original heads at 4,000 hours, which is, you know, high, but these machines are built for it. And we can scroll down here. Right, here's one thing I'd like to check. The still timer is 8 minutes, so if you leave a tape stopped, 
it will sit there in pause for eight minutes and I think that's too long so let's see if I can adjust that right uh, some Sony service manuals have a copy of the uh, user manual built in but not in this case because the user manual is quite big as a result of which I hadn't found initially the part I needed for changing uh, the settings in the menu so let's go into the menu again and see if I've got it right this time so what I wanted to do was change the timeout from eight minutes there it is number 501 still timer right I've read the user manual rather than the service manual so I now know how to alter these things so 501 is still timer set to eight minutes so what I need to do is put it into jog mode and then whilst pressing the jog button there we are whilst pressing the jog button I can rotate this and alter the still timer so it says eight minutes there which is 14 on this setting if I rotate it I'm going to take it down so that now it says seven on there I don't know why it says seven but it does and one minute so that's long enough still timer for me I don't want to wear tapes out by sitting it in still so if I let go of that now I need to press set and now if I go back into 501 that will be set to one minute good right the other thing I like to set on these is internal signal generator so we go to menu 710 and you can select different color bars reverse color bars bow tie pulse and bar multi-burst horizontal sweep and some others so I think we'll set we'll go for hundred percent color bars let's do that so we press set now I think if I switch off and on I think we should be rewarded as there's no tape in there we should be rewarded with the color bars no I've just put a digibeta tape in this and the machine's ignoring me in fact the only thing I can do is get it to reject no this is an analog tape it did the same with the digibeta tape so what could be wrong key inhibit off okay it warns if key inhibits on so it's not that underneath control panel set to internal not external doesn't warn you about that what's wrong okay in key inhibit it doesn't eject either nothing to do with the tape it's just having none of it what have I done wrong and I thought I must have set something wrong such as switch down here which is marked control panel external internal and when you flick it to external nothing works but that includes eject eject doesn't work either so it's not that so I figured I must have screwed up something in the menu and I was wondering if we could do a factory reset to get it back again but actually it turns out not to be necessary because if I go into the menu and go down to local enable it says ST and EG EJ which means if we go into it stop and eject only when it's in local well that's not very clever so if I go all enable and then set that means it will do it and now all functions let's use that one all functions will be available and you can tell because I can press the button in advance and it lights up so there we are so if your DVWA 500 doesn't work it could be because of that menu setting something else I said earlier on that this machine does not have 
dynamic track following which means it can give you perfect playback at different speeds from analog recordings and it does the buttons are here DMC which means dynamic something oh hang on maybe it does look that's three times speed ah not five then so it can play at three times normal speed and give you a perfect picture or slow-mo or reverse yes half reverse speed full reverse speed but not three times reverse speed so it has it seems to have limited capability for perfect picture in picture search now normally of course if you hit stop ah look when I hit stop then the dynamic track following feature cut out and now it's not giving perfect freeze frame shuttle still that's what gives you the perfect freeze frame but if you do hit stop the machine is still running the heads and it will create head and tape wear so what you can do when you're in stop mode is disable standby you see that lights on switch it off and now it will unlace and that switches off the head drum but it means of course it's slower to respond now so it takes a bit of time before it can play again we've had some fun playing with this let's take a look inside we could look in the service manual for what all these dozens of cards do but right now I'm more interested in the mechanism okay I've um, we slide these across and then this pops off and then undo these two screws and that comes off. I had a spotter bother because there's a plastic keeper on this side of the screw to stop it falling out and someone had incorrectly fitted it on the other side of the screw so uh, I just had to fix that. I don't know if you can see, I'll zoom you in a bit, there's a lot of black debris down here. Don't know why. I think we'll take the cassette carriage off and get in there and have a look look at it and see if we can clean it up so to take the cassette carriage off we need to remove this connector and simply lift it out beautiful design now I can get to all this um, black debris that seems to be floating around clean it up and see if there's uh, any source for that other than just tapes this in case you don't know what it is is a sapphire block which burnishes the tape so if there's any loose material on the tape that takes it off what a wonderful design this is the end sensor here which uh, operates exactly the same way as Betamax because of course this is a souped up version of Betamax so that looks for the metal leader tape and of course in one sense this machine will play a Betamax tape provided it's been recorded with a Betacam oxide recording it can play a Betamax tape now we may have a bit of a problem here can you see there are cracks in the pinch roller so that pinch roller is well past its best if anybody can tell me where I can get a replacement I would love to replace that pinch roller some time ago I had a problem with my uh, DVW A510P which is a player version of this machine in that it gave an error message that said it couldn't change the real size so this wasn't working and I think it was saying that the one of the flags was made when it shouldn't be made and unfortunately it was sat under a, a large quantity of other Umatic and M2 and all kinds of different equipment and I was really going to struggle to get it out and fix it but um, I looked at the layout and the design and I stuck my fingers in here 
and I manually drove this wheel until the spools travelled in and do you know when I powered the machine up it worked and it never gave me any trouble again with either tape size so it might have just been some dust in the sensor but uh, that was lucky because it saved me removing it from a great big stack of other equipment another thing that could probably use replacement is this, it's the head cleaner roller and there's a certain amount of um, black contamination on that so uh, I would quite like to change it I wonder if I could invert it so the contaminated part is away from the head tips a bit fiddly, not sure how to change that component we visit that one later. Right, okay, I think what we'll do now, I've cleaned up some of that tape debris, I'll uh, refit the cassette carriage and we can see the mechanism working. Right, I believe that's fully set in. For the purpose of seeing what we're doing, I won't refit this. I may have to hold this down a little bit so that it doesn't have any slack so that we can operate it with the lid removed and get a good view. Now, I don't have to be scared of putting too much light in this because of course unlike VHS it doesn't have optical sensors so it won't get all confused. We may get a better view if I use a small tape. I'm going to use a small DigiBeta tape. You could hear the head cleaner cycling then. Put it into play. And the, you know, the lacing is quite reminiscent of Betamax. Stop, rewind. And like Sony Beta machines, it stays fully laced up. Similarly fast forward of course. And it really does shift a lot of tape. If you can see that spool, it, it empties and refills quickly. Let's rewind. I've stopped it and now I'll hit standby. So you can see it slackens off the tape and switches off the head. Which saves on tape and headwear. And we'll put in a large tape. You can't see the spools so well on this size tape. And eject that one. Let's take a quick look at the boards we have here. Uh, I see there's one missing here, which is the very back one. And I'm guessing that that's an option it doesn't have. Board 11. Is ah yes analog composite decoder optional accessory BKDW506. So that would be for I think composite video in. Uh, well, really not terribly important. So I can see why that was missed out. S video in that would have been useful. There are no other options on this. On the player only models, there'll be quite a few cards missing. So should we take a look at a board? VPR1, this one here, is an analog board. It's video signal processor, A to D, D to A, and generators and encoders. So let's just take a look at some of the technology on that board, shall we? Right, no risk of damaging anything on the back there. It's all shielded. One thing I really like is uh, not so much what's there as what's missing. It's not sprayed in surface mount capacitors. Oh, good. Because they tend to be pretty unreliable. Surface mount electrolytics, I should say. There are quite a lot of capacitors, though. Let's hope they're good quality.
even this board has some options missing. Setup, it says, is not there. So, of course, lots of big Sony custom ICs. In fact, nearly all the major devices here are Sony custom devices. What are they? Are they relays? No. Connectors? Not sure what these are. Transformers, perhaps? And there's a big fuse there. 4 amp, 125 volt. You really don't want that to pop. And uh, what year is it? 99, I believe. Or that one is 2000. So that's the order of things. Roughly year 2000 or so. Let's carefully refit this board. Just overcome a problem I had earlier. I've been reading the user manual about how to get the barcodes and test tones on and they're separate so let's get the barcodes first, the colour codes. So we'll switch this on, we'll go into, well what we had to do was item 710, remember we'd set the uh, menu item 710 so that we wanted colour bars. So CB100 which is 100% colour bars, but also it says you need to have no tape in there or it's still threading, which is okay, there's no tape. <clears throat> and then you press the input select switch for three seconds, so get out the menu, one, two, three. No? As for the tones, that's on 808, let's just go and have a look at that, see if we can get the tones on. Silence, one kilohertz sign, we'll have that. Set. And how do you set it on? Continuously press one of the input select audio channels. Okay, that works. We have tone. Can't hear it because I haven't got anything audio connected, but if we did, you'd have one kilohertz tone. So that's working. Ah, is it one of these video input select buttons I need to press to get the colour bars on? There we go. Now we have colour bars and tones. It's not as easy on this model as it is on the A510 player only, which will just switch to this mode when it's not in use. But if I power cycle it now, it will drop out of that mode. That's right. So if you want tones and bars, you have to select, hold that for bars and hold one of these for tones. There you go. It says you can record that. So let's go to the end of this tape and see if we can record it. Okay, there's nothing recorded on the end of the tape here. So I'll, I'll record the tones and bars on there, okay, they're all on. Record inhibit it says. Stop. Recorder. I need to find out where that's lit, don't I? Okay, I've been a little bit silly. The reason I had trouble with it ignoring all commands earlier and I had to change something in the menu that altered what it would do and the reason it's not going into record mode now is because this light is on. That's putting it into remote control mode. Now it should do everything. So now I need to switch on the color bars and tone put it into stop. Colour bars and tone are on. Now I should be able to record the colour bars and tone. It 
it still says it's in stop mode, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Now it's in play mode. Do you know it still says record inhibit, that's why. Why is record inhibit on? It's not because the tape is in record inhibit mode. No, because there's the record inhibit switch. It's in a subtly different place on these large tapes. And everybody knows on Betamax, domestic Betamax, the record switch is there. But on Betacam SP and DigiBeta, it's on the opposite side. Then with these larger tapes, it's uh, back on this side, but further across. So that's not the reason it's not going into record mode. Why then, when I hit record, does it just run the tape counter, but stay in stop? Why is record inhibit enabled? Is it a menu thing? I think I may have worked out where I've been silly. We've got this record inhibit selector on, and so I'm not getting any recordings. And I've been looking all over the place for a switch but I'd forgotten about <laughs> those switches and one of them is record inhibit on off so I imagine you'd set that to on if you're in an environment where you don't want your machine to ever record over your important recordings switch that to off now hopefully I can I don't know if I need to press this button here to put it into recorder mode I don't think I need that no I think that's the remote control operation so now I should be able to just select record, maybe. And it should record the colour bars and tone. That's working. So you can tell that's uh, the first time I've done a recording on a DigiBeta tape. Right, I'll stop that. And we should be able to play and go back and forth and see our recording. Shouldn't we? I'm sure it said in the instructions that you can record the colour bars. Try that again. Colour bars. No, it says it's in stop mode. Now it's in record mode. Now I should be able to stop that and go into the shuttle mode and see it. Yes. There it is. Oh good. Not the most exciting recording anyone's ever done, but it's my first DigiBeta recording, so I'm pleased with that. Now presumably, if I tried to do a recording with the uh, record inhibit switch pushed in, it would not allow me to. Record inhibit lit. Correct, it won't allow it. Just what I expect. I'm getting the hang of this. Now, of course, if I attempted to record on an analog tape, it would, so even though the record tab is enabled, it will not allow me to do so. Record inhibit. So, Alex. This is a standard definition video recorder. It's quite big, isn't it? I think it would be fair to say that it's the highest quality standard definition video recorder ever made. That's quite something, isn't it? Pop one of the tapes in and have a play.
Go on then. That seems to work. There's a picture on the TV. Well, there was a moment ago. Pop the other one in. Was eject. Oh, there. Impressed? Yes. It's quite something, isn't it? Well, there's obviously a great deal more to know about these beautiful machines, but at least we've managed to get it to play and record, so I'm fairly pleased with that. Don't forget to like, share and especially subscribe, and my dad will do more video and audio related content in the near future. Goodbye!